welcome to Echelon's How I Did It. This is where we talk about how entrepreneurs and business leaders are building Sri Lanka's most impactful and innovative organizations. In the window next to me is uh, Raquel Fernando, who uh, just over a year ago, I think, moved back to Sri Lanka and uh, took over leadership at daras.lk. Something relevant to set the background for the conversation is that you know, uh, Daras has changed ownership a couple of times since starting their business here in Sri Lanka in about 2014. And now, wait for it, it's owned by Alibaba. So this is no great secret. You, some of you probably already know this. Uh, but Alibaba ownership um, uh, has the potential um, to sort of present a vision to Daras and make accessible technology to Daras mm -hmm. that, uh, that otherwise uh, is some of the leading technology in the world. Uh, Rakhil, it must be quite... Uh, Quite the thing, right? Quite over. Uh, I don't know whether it's overwhelming, but uh, what you have access to because of who your partner is must be quite special. Yes, I mean it. It, it is sort of very exciting to have a parent company who's you know accomplished so much and 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 really a market leader in 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 e-commerce in a global sense to be sort of part of Deraz's uh, family. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's a lot of technology, a lot of features, a lot of cool products that Alibaba has waiting in the wings that, you know, we want to deploy in all the markets Deraz is operating, but we're also waiting for the right time to deploy those features. And you were in the job, I think, for about a year before when COVID hit? Uh, just right? I joined Deraz uh, June last year. Okay, so well short of a year, right? And, and, and when this hit, you know, did you have a moment, oh, shit, you know, this is the worst possible start you could have had because, you know, hey, you were sort of possibly repositioning the business for something. Uh, or was it, was it something completely different? How, how, how was the first shock of COVID? Yeah, I, I think it was, I, when I joined Daraz in June, we, you know, the country went through the Easter attacks and therefore, uh, you know, things were changing then as well. So I joined the business at the point of, uh, not transition, but at a point of disruption and then as well. So sort of it was a bit of, you know, uh, a christening by fire then as well. Mm -hmm. So we as a business, I think, took a lot of lessons of what we, how we had to adapt in, uh, in April last year and use some of those lessons this year as well, primarily on the disruption of the business. Uh, on top of that, we also, also had to, you know, just at many le levels of security and safety when it comes to all our staff and our customers and sellers. But I think the business in itself had the ability to get through it much better this year because we went through last year as well. You know, Sri Lanka, I think right now is still at a very nascent stage of e-commerce. Uh, like I you know, mentioned to you in the past, we're well, less than 1% of overall e-commerce, overall retail in Sri Lanka. So still there's so much room to grow. Uh, you know, India, I think is at about three percent so you know just for us to hit a comparable plus ratio to india we have you know a 300 percent growth that we can see in sri lanka so in that sense there's still i think room for basic e-commerce to really evolve in sri lanka still there's a lot of room to improve when it comes to logistics last miles that you know we've invested so much as a business and we want to really see the fruits of the investment more um, but, you know, it's definitely other products and features and services that we, we want to introduce when the time is right. Can you try to put some numbers? I'm, I'm sure yeah. you're working with some number of projections. So, 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 you know, right now, e-commerce in Sri Lanka is around $100 million in, in sales. Yeah. Right. Now, Daraz, we project our business to do about $100 million in sales in the next 18 months. So, you know, that's sort of where we, if, if we are at that scale in 18 months, then the overall e-commerce industry, we project it to be about 200 million, 280 million uh, in the next uh, 18 months as well. So that's, you know, that's a significant growth from where we are right now. And then you also see that exponentially increase after you, after you sort of find that tipping point. So, you know, I think going from 200 to 300 will be far quicker than going from 100 to 200. Now, you, you talked about your ambition, your, your vision to create an entertainment app of Daras, right? You know, 
I don't know if groceries fits into that thing of entertainment. Surely they'll sort of potentially keep your customers hanging around you, uh, make them a little bit more stickier than otherwise, right? But you know, if if you had to make choices, how do you how do you how do you how do you reconcile this stuff, and how do you think you'll potentially, given what you know now and of the future, how do you think you'll play this out? So for us, you know, it's 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 the priority still is very much e-commerce. You know, we we definitely that's where we're focusing all our energy and all our resources to grow, and that's where we want to put a significant stake in 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 achieving over the next you know couple of years. And through that same period, we will start introducing certain features that are outside e-commerce to to bring value to our customers. But that's still our priority is still very much helping people find what they want to buy and making sure they get it quickly and at the best price. So, you know, we, we, that, as, as a business, even Alibaba Group, that is still very much the core value of our business. Make sure we have the cheapest product, the most amount of assortment and the fastest delivery. So, so you're, you're talking about a few things. Cheapest product, the greatest choice, fastest delivery. This is Sri Lanka, right? You have to work with the infrastructure that you have here, right? Which of those is challenging? So the delivery side is definitely where we find the biggest challenge, and that's where we probably make our biggest investments as well. You know, right now, Dura's processes around 15,000 orders a day, and 70% of that is, is delivered by our own fleet. So we have a platform called Dex, Dura's Express, that we do last mile and first mile deliveries through. And, and the reason for that is we, the, and, and the remaining, let's say, 30% of our deliveries is, is split among a big range of uh, 3PL partners, third-party logistics companies. And the reason of that is we, we still, you know, we, we feel that the reason we need to partner with 12 is we feel that, that, that the 3PL market still needs to mature more to be able to uh, come through with the service standards that we need when it comes to e-commerce. Um, and, you know, that market is definitely maturing and becoming better at what they do, especially uh, with our channel. And we've seen significant improvements. For example, you know, um, a year ago when I joined, the average delivery time for Dara's product anywhere in the country was around five days. Now it's three days. Uh, and and you'll be shocked, like for us to bring it down by half a day, the amount of money, the resources, the people it takes to to make those improvements is so much that you know we've we've done you know we 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 want to get to my my goal as a business in the next twelve months is to do same day or next day delivery island wide for at least a large proportion of our SKUs that sit at least within our warehouses uh, uh, within consignment of Duras. You started the business, or the business is currently positioned as a marketplace, right? So, so by its very definition, you are asset light to to a degree, right? But but your uh, your delivery challenges or your logistics challenges kind of sort of alters that balance that you would like to like to have. Yeah. So it's, it's 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 I I it's I would I would say by inventory light and not probably asset light. Uh, right. You know we have to we we have to really invest a lot into warehouses and because if we if if our sellers give us items on consignment, then it just allows us to control the 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 end to end delivery much better because it's the product is entirely within our ecosystem, and that allows us to then meet the delivery standards that we want to achieve by bringing the you know, delivery dates less from three plus three days to one day. So um, to do that, we need to invest more. We're looking at building more warehouses around the country, uh, building our fleet even further. So with that comes with, comes you know a big investment into the entire logistics infrastructure. Sure. Um, and and we were talking a little while ago um, about the Chinese experience with with these apps, right? You know, I don't. Uh, you were sort of a little averse to the term super app. Right, one app that that does it all, right? Um, uh, but but that is essentially the vision uh, that possibly uh, you will want to pursue for Daras. Yes, I mean it's it's we're, we're not we're not uh, like I said we're not we're not going we're, we're not growing the business with that agenda of being a super app. We just want to make sure that we have the right product for our customers when they want it, and and. If that results in us having a lot of features and services within one place, then so be it. <laughs>
right? Besides the challenges you have around logistics, um, I'm sure payments may be a challenge for you. Is is that the case? Because uh, the sort of prevalence of people using credit cards or debit cards is, is apparently quite low in Sri Lanka. Is that so? Yes, so that's again one of our biggest challenges as a company is you know a majority of our transactions are cash on delivery, so that right. puts a lot of strain and and uh, risk in our business and and pressure on our delivery ecosystem to be able to manage that that amount of cash all the time. So we are always looking at ways to improve the what we call the prepayment share of our business. You know, obviously, we always have great credit card promotions tied up with banks that that encourage people to use their credit cards. But we're also looking at new products and features to 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 encourage prepayments. For example, we have recently, I think this is the first time I'm actually talking about this in public, is is that um, we have re recently greenlit a mini incubation uh, program within Duras to launch our own short term credit uh, payments platform. For Sri Lanka, so we will be giving people interest-free uh, credit to buy things online, and they only need to make the payment for that product after they get it and try it out for a week. So essentially, we remove all the risks from the sellers, where the sellers get paid up front, and we allow customers to pay us within one month, two months, three months, interest-free. So it's it's just a, you're splitting your payment into three, and and uh, and making the payment. So this really also allows us to remove a lot of the concerns and barriers that why people don't make prepayments online because they want to try the product, they don't trust using their debit cards or credit cards online. So this allows them to get credit without you know, giving their credit card details or anything like that and allow, allows us to really target customers who are hesitant to make prepayments, but it removes that risk for sellers that you know, they don't have to bear the risk. So this is a, a platform that we're looking to develop in-house in Sri Lanka as a pilot and launch it as an independent company uh, to Daraz uh, and, and, and get it out there, not just for online stores, but we're also looking to do this for offline stores as well. You know, credit card penetration in Sri Lanka is still something like, you know, it's, it's, it's in a very small percentages. So, uh, you know, we feel like this kind of buy now, pay later platform will really bring more people into uh, using, you know, credit in order to make purchases and, 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 and you know, try out stuff. Well, this, this, this sounds quite interesting. So, uh, so I'm just curious, who, who carries the, uh, who finances the purchases that customers would make? We do, uh, the company. Okay. So, right. we're, you know, we're building a big risk, risk engine, what we call it as a risk engine, it's a risk algorithm. Uh, that uses both AI and uh, machine learning to um, essentially address and analyze somebody's ability to pay back when they want to buy something. And we use a lot of data sources to assess your ability. And then if you do fall within our criteria, you are approved to you know, buy this product as a buy now, pay later product. Well, uh, I think in China, when Alibaba was was growing it launched something called alipay which is now part of i think ant financial which is has been spun off as a separate company um, it it looks like you're you're taking some of the learnings from alibaba's experience here correct so i mean we're definitely looking at sort of how we can get into the payment space and you know it in the payment space in itself is a standalone business and a standalone industry that um, allows us to both service there are, but also other people, uh, you know, with the great tech we hopefully build. So um, that's something quite exciting because we're the first market in Daraz to try something like this. Um, and if it does work, we, we plan to scale this company to, you know, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, to all the markets where we are present. And right. so, yeah, I, I think that, that little bit of background is crucial. Uh, t tell us how Alibaba controls comes to control Dara Sri Lanka. It's, it's through uh, a regional holding company, is it? Correct. So, you know, Alibaba, so Daraz was started by Rocket Internet, um, which is a German sort of technology incubation company. They started Daraz about five years ago, I think. It was called Kaimu then, it was a different oh. name. And then they rebranded it as Daraz about three years ago. 
Um, and then Alibaba acquired the entire Deraz uh, group of companies in the five markets we operate uh, two years ago. And now our holding company, our head office is based out of Singapore. And um, they essentially operate the five markets. Sure. And, and those five markets are Sri Lanka. Bangladesh, Nepal, Myanmar, and Pakistan. So Pakistan is by far our largest market. And then Bangladesh is the second largest. And Sri Lanka is now soon catching up to be one of the largest stakes of uh, largest markets of the Raj group as well. Thanks for joining us. And, and just by way of a note, in the description, there'll be links to the story that uh, the cover story that Echelon did with Daras and uh, featuring Rakil um, in September. Uh, that's a great read. Uh, plenty of other links too there. Uh, and thank you, Rakil. Thanks for taking the time. Great having Thanks you on the show. Thanks a lot. Have a good day.